inspiring song. Yeah. I have no inspiration. Thank you. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sunday with Ola number 40. It's Valentine's Day today, man. Holy shit. Do you have a Valentine? I have a Valentine. So this episode today is going to be a little bit more special. Uh, it, Luis is going to be in it a lot more. Let's just say that. Maybe you've been wondering, like, what, what any new solar guitars lately? And I'm like, no, not really. February is a, a, a slow month when it comes to new solar guitars. But you guys have no idea what's in store for the rest of the year. Right? So it's going to be exciting. Let's just say that. And I can't wait to show you guys what's up. So uh, with that said, we're going to head over to the news. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about the news this week. Well. The thing is that the news this week has been absolute horseshit. I was just sitting today before this, going through, you know, past week's news, and there's basically nothing worthy of talking about. I mean, obviously Marilyn Manson, but I don't want to talk about Marilyn Manson. And uh, you know, it's just it just sucks right now. There's nothing happening. Maybe my threshold is just way too high for what I consider being important news. I don't know, man. Anyways, I found one piece of news that I thought was really interesting, and it really shows how important this piece of news was. But it's basically this. There's this guy who made a tribute to his uncle by making a guitar out of his skeleton. Now, how about that? There's a little bit more to the story. Uh, uh, this uncle of his uh, passed away in a car accident and uh, he volunteered to have his uh, remains being displayed for uh, teaching purposes in a school. So this guy's skeleton has been, you know, educational for the past 20 years. And then when the school didn't want to keep his bones anymore, you know, why not just make a f***ing guitar out of his bones? You know, at least he's thinking really, really and environmentally friendly, you know, by using it, uh, you know, uh, dead people bones. So maybe that will become a thing from now on where people are using uh, their dead relatives as guitars. In other news, which uh, maybe not might be as much news for you guys, or maybe you guys just don't care, but I think it's a little bit important. Uh, it's the fact that Matias Asado, who is this, who is an incredible guitar player from Brazil, uh, he shuts down his Instagram account, announces break from music. Now, if you're not familiar with Matteo Sassado, he basically uh, is uh, an internet guitar phenomenon, I would say. He basically built his whole uh, character and audience through Instagram. And now he took a decision to not do Instagram for an indefinite time. The reason being, you know, Instagram helped musicians to get better at business at making flawless performance videos after uncountable takes. I got lost inside the boxes of 15 to 60 second videos. This feels weird because I don't even feel the excitement of grabbing my guitar to enjoy the goodness and blessings that music creates on us artistically. I honestly did not want to blame it on the pandemic, but I got it to a point where my inspiration simply disappeared. So, I mean, holy shit, he has like a half a million subscribers on YouTube, which is an incredible uh, amount of numbers. The reason why I, you know, wanted to bring up this piece of news is because I've been thinking a lot about you know, what what I'm doing on YouTube and what a, other, what a lot of other people do on YouTube as well. And you know, this, this, uh, this shallowness that is social media. And it seems from Matthias that he's kind of like grown sick of it. And uh, you know, he shuts it off basically. A lot of people would probably see it as a, a mistake, but maybe this is what needs to happen for a lot of people where they feel that, you know, Everything that was fun about playing guitar just went away. Sorry, I'm just listening to this playing. It's incredible. I think the social media is sucking away a little bit of the life uh, out of a lot of uh, musicians that really can't handle the social media aspect of, uh, you know, social media. <laughs> 
where it comes to the point where, you know, expectations are just so high and it puts a lot of pressure on you as an individual. At the end of the day, I mean, all these guys that have, you know, millions of followers and people expect them to upload, you know, them playing every day. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, man. I've been thinking a lot about this, you know, the, the, the community is kind of, you know, just screaming for more content. On the other end, there's a, you know, a YouTuber or a, a, an individual trying to, you know, live up to the fast world of social media where there are so many other, you know, guitar players and uh, other creators out there where the pressure becomes, you know, way too much for you to handle and it basically sucks all the love out of why are you doing it in the first place, which is uh, you uh, playing guitar. You know, so I think this piece of news is uh, worth noticing and also worth discussing. Now, for me personally, obviously, you know, I just try and do whatever I want on my YouTube channel. And that's how I keep myself going, because I try to make stuff that I still think is fun to do. But I mean, I'm lucky that I have other things. You know, I have my music that also generates money and you know, I have solar guitars that also generates money. So YouTube, I mean, I don't have the pressure to upload content and, and uh, renew myself all the time. But a lot of the creators out there, they don't have anything else. So they need to fucking be out there every day and push. And it has to be really, really stressful. And I just wanted to shed some light on this up to the point where, you know, Matteo Sassado, who built his character on Instagram, basically decides to f Instagram. You know? <laughs> oh my goodness. What a perfect intro. <laughs> <laughs> so Adventures with Ola today is a little bit uh, non-adventurous. Uh, I decided because it's Valentine's Day today that uh, we, uh, Luis and I, would take a couple of questions, just like in the old days. Do you remember when I had FAQs? And <laughs> it was we, a long time ago. Very long time ago. And you know, since then I probably got, gained a lot of subscribers. Uh, you look great, oh, by the way. Thank you, honey. You look uh, great too. Oh, thank you. It's not that uh, common that I wear a, a shirt, but for the occasion, you know, <laughs> you can see it's a little short, maybe. Yeah, it is. And, Why? Uh, maybe I've grown. <laughs> <laughs> so I reached out to you guys on YouTube uh, to ask us questions and uh, I've gathered a couple. Let's uh, go through them all. First one is from Ryan Wilson. Luis, is there anything that you do for Ola that you don't like, but do anyways because you love him? For my wife, it's scratching my back, and I love her dearly for it. <laughs> That's really nice. That's nice. Doing laundry isn't that much fun. <laughs> I do but laundry I do too. It anyway. But you do it a little bit more. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah. To so you just you you're doing the laundry just because you love me. <laughs> well. <laughs> what do I do for you? I do nothing for you. <laughs> there you go. That's the answer. <laughs> She doesn't do anything for me. Maybe not anything that would be like romantically funny. Not like um, YouTube worthy. N no. <laughs> Next question. Marco Sorvillo. Hey Luis, do you like Ola's music? When my wife listens to my songs, she's like, oh, very good. But I see disappointment in her eyes. So sad. <laughs> There's a follow-up answer to this question. His wife came in and said, I really enjoy your music. My disappointment is for your stupid dance while I listen to the song. <laughs> Fat burn by his wife right there. But yes, do you like my music? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's it's difficult because I I'm with you at the whole process of making of your music. Yeah. So it starts like ding, boop, 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 ding, boop, 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 and yeah. then you do your <laughs> your stuff. That's the metronome, by the way. Yeah, and then it grows. So it's like I guess it's the same for you that you're almost kind of tired of the song. You when have it's no idea. Finished. You have no idea. I just like <laughs> we just finished mixing the album, sort of, and you know I'm already sick of it. And yesterday I started doing the guitar profiles for the tab book, and then I have to listen to my album in guitar in MIDI, in MIDI format. Yeah. It's like da, 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 da. it's like listening to uh, an old uh, Doom soundtrack. Uh, so uh, I hate my music so much right now. Just saying. Yeah, but but other than that, I mean, I like the style of the music. I think you're doing a lot of great stuff. 
um, both with Beard and, your, and the solo stuff, but you know that. You know that I, I come from a metal type of yes. uh, genre. Yes, even exactly. Even before we met, so exactly. yeah. Exactly. Good answer, I like that. Bellsprout666, no question, just wanted to say you guys are adorable. Aww. Aww. That's sweet, thank you. Mike McCann, hola, you should teach Luis a pater riff for Valentine's Day, perhaps this love. <laughs> oh. Oi. Oi. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this uh, guitar was tuned a little weird, but it's quite there. This is the slob. This is how you play it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Easy. Okay. Oh, you get beautiful nails, though. Look at that. It's I'll, like I'll... this. No. Nope. No, there? No, no, there. And then you hold a bar, this on this string as well. What? This. With the finger yes. all over it. Yes, then. exactly. Yeah. Up the stair. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll help. And then, okay. then you put that there and play again. Painful <laughs> and untrue. There you hey, go. Uh, My wife can do anything. No, no, I can't. Princess Rose is sausage the perfect Valentine's gift, Ola. <laughs> Louise, what's your favorite gift from Ola? Okay. Uh, the first one was a joke. It's not the best uh, sausage. I mean, is not the yeah, best Valentine's gift. Is that gift. like an inside joke or something? Well, when I made <laughs> this post, the, I used a father curve. As, as a picture, I don't know <laughs> okay. why, because I had it on my phone, I had a follow curve on my phone, and that's what I used. <laughs> so, <laughs> no subliminal messages or anything like that, it was just a follow curve. What's the question? Favorite um, gift from favorite Ola? Gift. I think maybe the necklace you gave me, oh, the, yeah. the golden one, that yes. is unfortunately broken right now. You know, I, 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 otherwise I had the most beautiful answer. Oh yeah? That you could get. The oh, kids? You, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That was oh, not you the gave gift me two for me. Kids. No, that was <laughs> like, not that was, from you to yes. me. No, I, I get it. I mean, I, I produced something myself. Yes, exactly. Uh, you helped. Yeah. Even though I did most of the work <laughs> yeah. at the beginning, and then you did the rest. No, but uh, you, the golden necklace was something I gave to you in the beginning of our relationship, and you wore that. You've been wearing that every day. Since, every day yeah, since. Yeah, since it uh, until it broke. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Yes, so we're gonna fix that necklace, but you've had that necklace on. Uh, yeah. If you check so out old, I took something if else. you have an old FAQ, you can watch her wear that necklace. That was like the, with the, the start of heart. with a golden heart. That was the start of our relationship. It was very nice. Okay. So there you go. That was the last question. Oh yeah. Still look beautiful, by the way. Thank you. With that said, I think both me and Louise want to wish you all a great Valentine's Day. And uh, to all the couples and uh, married people that are watching this, and also the singles out there uh, of any shape and form, happy Valentine's Day. And, you know, at least call your mom today. Yeah, why not? <laughs> call your if mom. If you have one. If yes. you have one. Okay. Or your sister. Yes. That would be nice too. Okay, thank you. Bye. A clap? No? <laughs> all right. Valentine's Day surprise. Guy with the flowers. Va fick du blommor? From a secret admirer, maybe. Yeah. What is it? Ooh. Ooh. There's something more. Oh, filled chocolate, it says. Aww. Oh, look at that. Oh, sweet. Look at that. <laughs> what? Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. Oh, good. <laughs> So there you go, that was a little short snippet of the Valentine's FAQ that uh, me and Louise made. Uh, it became a little longer than I expected, so you only get to see like a portion of it uh, in uh, this Sunday with Ola. But I'm gonna put up the full FAQ with Louise up here. You can access it right now after this, you can go watch it. I'll make it public tomorrow, so I mean, you can also wait until tomorrow. Are you uh, subscribed to my channel? Do you have that notification bell clicked? Great, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. All right, I forgot to make this for a couple of Sundays with Ola, but remember I did like just a tip where I talked about YouTubers. I did it twice only, but then I forgot because that's that's just how it is. I'm Ola the, the forgotterer. 
Also, where the hell is my sample board? It's all the way over there. How am I supposed to play samples now? That's what I wonder. Anyways, just a tip. I want to give a tip to a very obvious a guy that every musician should follow. It's Rick Beato and he definitely does not need more subscribers and he's he's just way much bigger uh, in terms of the YouTube creator uh, musician kind of thing. But he has the most amazing channel and uh, a lot of people follow him because of his what makes a band great videos where he basically analyzes songs. That's not why I like his channel, I just like to hear him talk. And why do I like to listen to him? Because he has a lot of knowledge that I find really, really interesting to listen to. And he's, he's just telling the story really well. Uh, here's a video uh, where he's talking about why record labels suck. And he gives an example of a band that he signed a, a production deal with and then basically how that band kind of... Uh, got signed, you know, and uh, became something else and it just fell apart. It's just really interesting hearing Rick talk about all these things and uh, it's just really insightful. I think that is the main reason why I like Rick Beato is just listening to his voice, man. I just want to shed a little bit of light. There might be a couple of metalheads out there that have not seen Rick Beato, but there's a lot of really good content out here. He's a good talker and good storyteller and uh, that's why I appreciate him. And I also saw here, where is it? I, uh, he, he's doing like my latest top 10 Spotify review. Uh, okay, so I need to find like the top 10 list. Top lists. This is Swedish by the way, if you, if you uh, didn't know. Top 50 in the world. Is there any metal on here? To be honest, I don't recognize any of the names on here. I mean Black Eyed Peas. Yes. Justin Bieber. Uh, Ed Sheeran, okay. Well, it's not really my genre. Can we go to the metal genre? Check some things out? I, this will probably demonetize my video, but who gives a shit? Metal, okay. Let's, let's just check out some new metal tracks, man. I haven't heard a good metal track in a while. What's this? Every Time I Die? Not my style. No. Era, what's this? You know, while I'm, <laughs> while I'm quickly browsing through these, doesn't these songs sound a little bit the same? At least the production, okay. Camel Corpse though, that's cool. Here you have some bullshit, I love this. I haven't heard these bands before, man. Vola, okay, I've, I've heard people talk about Vola. This sounds good. Uh, sounds like something Louise would listen to. Corpiclani. Singing a finish, okay? What? What the f is this? This I like. Some good old Fresh, dude. Fresh metal band formed in 2000 in Spain. What? I like this man. Rabbit Junk. That's cool. Nicholas Cage fighter. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm. I need help. I need help to find good music. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create a Spotify playlist. How do I create a Spotify playlist? I don't know. Okay, it's gonna be called Recommend Me Good Shit. Okay. Okay, I found the perfect picture for my playlist. Can some? Can people add uh, stuff to this playlist? No. How do I do this? Jaman sound playlist. I don't know what that means, but okay, let's just make it that. Okay, just recommend me some good shit. I, I don't know if this playlist is gonna work or not, but uh, there you go. Thank you so much. Sunday with all our riff challenge. Let's start. We're gonna start straight away with Studio 20. Riff challenge. You know, you download the drums from the intro in the description of my video, and then you make your riffs and upload them to YouTube. I'll watch you, okay? This guy is screaming. Yeah. Charlotte Davis. Albany. Yeah, baby, but I thought you were supposed to sing more. That was a nasty scream. Listen to that. That's awesome. Studio 20. Next up is Fabian. Okay, that's his gear. What was the gear? Go back. 
HX Stomp and a Harley Benton something and a Dean ML. Okay, let's go. Slayer. Sounds fucking good. That's an instant like for me. Oh, you can see him. He's he's doing exactly what I'm doing. He's watching the camera screen to watch, you know, the looks. I admit, I admit it's a weird ending, but that's the part and deal with Sunday with Ola, okay? That was great. Thank you, Fabian. Last we have Mr. Dist. Mr. Dist, my tattoo artist. Incredible guitar player, by the way. Oh. Nice. Not only is he a great tattoo artist, he's also a better guitar player than me. Great! <laughs> that was good. That was fucking excellent. Mr. Dist, everyone. Go follow. So there you go. That's the Riff Challengers for today. If you want to be a Riff Challenger, download the drums in the description of this video. Make your riffs to that song or those drums over there. Upload to YouTube and I might check you out. Oh, hello. What's up? Shit. What's up everyone and welcome to Ola and Louise tasting shit. Last week we tried out the soft shit, today we're trying out the chocolate shit. I thought you were gonna say the brown shit. <laughs> the, the brown shit. The brown we're gonna try shit. the brown shit today. Obviously I've been getting a, a, a lot of slack from people that I don't like the American chocolate. And you know, I tried some, we've, we've tried some European chocolate, you know, Swiss and, and yes. whatnot. And we know, you know, European chocolate is, is great, US chocolate. Not so much, but... Uh, we are having two packages on our way with American... Oh, yes, so yes. So, you guys have recommended us some uh, more American chocolate that are less mainstream. that are supposedly going to be good. So, we're waiting for that. We're, you're going to see that. Here is a smorgasbord. It's good that we're using the word smorgasbord because that's Swedish. Yes. Let's just talk about the classic, I think, first. Yes. So, this is the most classic Swedish sweetest <laughs> chocolate you can yes, get this. and buy. This is Marabo classic milk chocolate. This was my favorite chocolate growing up, basically, from uh, when I was a kid up until a uh, teenager and, you know, <laughs> up until adult. It's still a really, really good until chocolate. Until you found this one. <laughs> it, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so this is a classic that you can also probably get from Ikea, by the way. I guess so. I guess. Yeah. In a shape and form. And this is a really good classic, just very milky, just a nice, solid, casual. I would call it casual chocolate. <laughs> when you have like Swiss chocolate, it's like you have to invest in, you know it's going to be an expensive experience. But with these, this, these are like the common folks chocolate. Yeah. It's really nice. It's the working class chocolate right there, you know? It's just so good. Another classic is this. This has been a, a thing for a lot of years as well. And this is this is a wafer yes. type of chocolate. And the problem with this, which has always been a problem with this, <laughs> even though it's really, really tasty, it just crumbles a lot. <laughs> so don't eat this in your couch. That's my little <laughs> Swedish tip for you right there. Let's just do this. There you go. See, just as I moved it over here, like half of it came to the floor and... Uh, it's well balanced. Yes, very well balanced. And worth mentioning is that the different chocolate types we're trying today, they're very different tasting in a way. What's being offered here is not being offered here. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's two different experiences. Another classic, the dime. And I think this is Fre Frederick's uh, favorite. Frick. Damn. <laughs> that's, damn. That's Frederick's favorite right there. The dime, the damn. <laughs> God damn, damn. Right there. This is uh, chocolate covered. Uh, toffee. I don't know what the knek is. <laughs> oh, it's knek. What is knek? What is knek in English? It's like hard toffee. Basically, what, you, what it is inside, it's hard toffee. Crunchy, crunchy maybe, but it's really good. And it's a classic as well. And you have it in ice cream. I haven't had that in a while. That was great. <laughs> Another classic. What does it come like this? I don't know. Is there. It's a mixed bag. Okay, okay, so this is the classic. It's called Dumle, and it's also like a toffee, uh, yes. soft toffee uh, with, covered with chocolate. Very soft. Very soft. And I'm gonna have and, the, uh, the licorice one. Okay. 
looks like a small little, uh, little uh, <laughs> small little turd. Thank you, Luis. Are you guys ready? So, there is one to rule them all, I would say. <laughs> and for you. For me, of course, <laughs> but it's this right here. The brand has been available since when, do you say? 1891. Okay, and it's this chocolate is based on an original recipe from 1922. 22. <laughs> Uniquely smooth texture and melt-in-mouth feel. Wow, it's it describes it perfectly. <laughs> Just to have a long story short, my dad worked in Finland. He worked for a company that was associated with the Fatser, so he would bring home chocolate like this. You, you just shoved it in there. I, I, you didn't even let me speak. Uh, and he brought it home and I was looking forward to it every time he got it home because he brought and... Still to this day, I cannot get sick of this flavor right here. Yeah. It's so fucking Very incredible. Yeah. This is like the... And that's also what you bring when you travel. When I travel, <laughs> I, I buy uh, a big box of these and that's all I eat. Yep. When, when I eat candy, obviously. <laughs> Nothing it's a, else. I know when I go to the US, you know, I know th they're not really good with the candy. I bring one of these and I give it to friends and they're like, what the... F and that's the story. What the Fatser? Carl Fatser, my favorite chocolate. I'll help you find it. And uh, somehow, I'm not going to help you find it. You have to find it yourself, <laughs> <laughs> but it's this one, okay? It's the blue one. Thank you so much, Ola tasting shit. That was great. I think that was it. That was Sunday with Ola right there. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I hope you had a great Sunday. Also, I would like to wish you all a happy, happy Valentine's Day. Call someone you care about. I mean, if it's a brother or sister or a mother or father or, a, you know, just a good friend, just give them a call and tell them that you really appreciate them. It doesn't have to be about love. It's more about appreciating people and the people that are important to you. Okay? Does that make any sense? No. Great. Thank you. So, I'll see you guys in the next Sunday with Ola. How about that? Thank you so much for watching, guys. And you beautiful members, f***ing hell, you are my boys and girls. Vagina friends and penis friends. Thank you so much. Bye. Ooh.